Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Get your popcorn ready for part 4 of Just a Bit of Bread. Let us know in the comment section your favorite part of this story. Also don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now for the story. Something was amiss. Ashpin felt it in his bones, a deep and terrible sense of foreboding that he could neither place nor pin down. The feeling hit as suddenly as a summer storm morning. One moment he'd been indulging in a piping hot cup of coffee, the better to steel himself for the long afternoon ahead. In the next, a sudden pang of primal dread burned down his spine. It seared through his being like a great flame, leaving the hairs on the back of his neck standing on end. A flash of bitter pain pushed itself through his forehead, and frowning, the immortal looked down. There was blood on the desk. His nose was bleeding. Well, he frowned and wiped it away, then peered at his bloodied fingers. That's not normal. In a wind caressed his cheek and despite being indoors without so much as a single window open, the ancient man felt himself shiver. For with that breeze came the familiar scent of falling leaves. It was a smell he knew well, for it was born from a power that had once been a part of him. Unbidden, his neck craned, gazing toward the city. A frown pursed at his lips. Amber. Wherever she was, she was close. Close enough for him to sense. But that didn't make any sense. Amber loathed the cities. She'd done her best to stay away from Vale and him. Another one of his many failings. He'd failed to impart the dangers of being a maiden to her until it was too late. She hadn't taken kindly to the truth of Salem. And so she had fled, choosing a life of freedom and anxiety over one of safety and security. She'd not come near civilization for years. So why now? What could have pushed her back? A burning need to act rose up in him, towards what he knew not, only that he must. With a grim look in his eye, the headmaster stood and snatched up his cane. The long memory warmed in his palm like an old friend, ready for the task at hand. His constant companion. Brisk steps carried him toward the elevator, then out of the tower proper. In short order, he commandeered a bullhead and bid its pilot to set a course for the city proper. He wasn't certain what was going on, but one way or another, he'd find out. How amusing. He fought well, you say? Salem lounged languidly upon her throne and regarded the misty image swimming within the seer before her. Cinder's battered face stared back at her within its murky depths, a bit dirty, a little bruised perhaps, but still proud. Satisfied, even. Her expression told a tale all its own, once Salem found herself eager to unravel. He did. She all but purred the last word. I believe he has potential. High praise from Cinder. She never thought she'd see the day. Slipping her apprentice into Beacon had been an easy feat. With but a few words from Leonardo, Ozma was all too happy to take her off his hands and welcome her into the fold. The fool. His eye for talent betrayed him. One thought he might have learned his lesson by now, but no. One could not teach an old dog new tricks. In all honesty, Salem was as much disappointed with him as she was Cinder. She taught the girl better than this, risking her cover as such. Cinder always did like her power plays. A small smile plucked at the witch's lips. And you say he bested you? Cinder huffed indignantly. I allowed him to believe so. Oh. A brow rose. Your eye says otherwise. She frowned. It is but a ruse. As you say. Such a prideful pawn. She craved power, but without it, she was nothing. Cinder thought herself special. She wasn't. She was simply a vessel. Salem had invested a great deal of time and training into this girl. It would be. Irritating to start anew, but not disastrous. A new minion would require a more delicate touch. She'd lose decades training up someone new, and while time meant nothing to one such as she, her patience was not infinite. Moreover, young Cinder was easy to control. Promise her power, give her a taste of it, and she would follow you to the very ends of Remnant. But more intriguing still was this, boy. Anyone who could fight Cinder to a standstill was one to be watched. And that semblance of his, it bore promise. Or danger. She hadn't decided which. Any semblance involving teleportation was one to be wary of, but a gift that allowed one to mark their target and warp to it as they chose? That was something she could not ignore. A single touch could undo everything. And yet the potential he presented was too much to dismiss. To use such power against Ashpin. Judging by her expression, Cinder agreed. Her girl was ever in search of new talent, after all. Poor, poor Mercury was hardly enough to satisfy her needs. Not enough to take the fall maiden, certainly. They'd been hunting Amber for years now, harrying her from one outpost to the next. She'd managed to elude them thus far, ever one step ahead of them, always able to escape. In time, Salem had seen the fruitlessness of such pursuit and ended it. 
Time would take from the fall maiden what an ambush could not. How long could one girl run when they were hunted so? How long until they came home to roost? How long until their mind broke? Amber would perish sooner or later. So long as Cinder was near, it mattered not who dealt the killing blow. Be it Tyrion, Hazel, Watts, or even their other, hidden allies. The parasite she'd gifted Cinder would see to that. After all, this was Cinder's quarry to chase. Hazel and the rest could be called in as needed. Beacon would fall. Ozma would die. In one way or another, the relic would be theirs. And what of this boy? He could destroy us. Hardly. He's an arrogant fool, crippled by sentiment. He's well-trained, Salem warned. He must not fall under Ashpin's sway. Her minion bowed her head. If he could be turned, he would be a powerful ally. Salem considered the matter for a moment. Yes, he would be a great asset. Can it be done? Cinder lifted her gaze. Golden eyes rose to meet hers, burning with promise and intent. He will join us or die, my queen. Here. Emerald slammed a fist into Amber's chest, staff in hand. Happy? I found your damn weapon, she huffed. Now get lost already. You did. The light flashed across the older girl's face. I can't thank you enough for this. Where was it? By your damn horse, she scowled, bloody red daggers at her back. You can thank us by buggering off. Go on, Scram. For her part, her fellow huntress looked quietly amused by Emerald's ire, as if she found it familiar somehow. Endearing, even. That coy look shattered as she cradled her staff. Emerald tried to ignore the sidelong look she sent Naruto's way. She could not, however, shut her eyes to the flush rising in his face. I really do appreciate this, Amber smiled at him, clutching her staff tight to her chest. You don't know what this weapon means to me. He looked away. Yeah, sure, it's fine. Blake and Pira were still out in the city searching, but a quick call could remedy that. Even now she saw Naruto pulling out his scroll, eager to distance himself from the strangely forward girl. Unfortunately, that left her with the brunt of Amber's attention. She wasn't much pleased with him for throwing her to this chatterbox. And said chatterbox wouldn't. Stop. Looking at him. Emerald bit down a hiss through her teeth. So that's how it was. Amber was older than them, after all. Probably a huntress at that. It made sense that she'd be over it with her affection. The thought lodged a thorn in Emerald's heart. She wasn't accustomed to jealousy, yet twice in as many days she'd found her position threatened time and again. First by that fire bitch, and now this mongrel? Naruto was hers. It wasn't fair. Coco was. All right, she supposed. The damn brunette drove her crazy, but at least she didn't fawn over him whenever they were in the same room. By contrast, young Blake and Pyrrha weren't competition, they were family. Teammates. Allies. Too young by half. But Amber. She moved with a quiet confidence even some of the upper years and Beacon lacked. For all her ditziness, Emerald knew her type. Amber was powerful. Strong enough to take what she wanted, yet mentally fragile as well. Anyone willing to trust complete and utter strangers was clearly cracked in the head. Maybe someone dropped her on hers when she was little. Who could say? Still, she was naive. That sort didn't last long in the streets. The naive ones did stupid crap, the kind that got themselves and those around them killed. Those vivid eyes swung back to her. He's a good person, isn't he? Damn straight he is, Emerald folded her arms beneath her bosom. And he isn't yours. Hmm. Amber cocked her head and favored her with a small, knowing smile. You love him, don't you? Emerald's world shattered. Wah. And he loves you, too, the huntress bulldozed on happily, heedless of the landmine she just trod upon. I can see it in his eyes. He loves you more than anyone. Anything. He'd die for you. Where's all this coming from? Reeling on the inside, it was all M could do to backpedal. What are you on about? He'll protect you, Amber nodded disregarding her protests. So will your team. I just know it. The four of you are close. Like family. Mine wasn't. A pit of confusion opened in Emerald's stomach. Her sixth sense shrieked a warning, and she listened to it wholeheartedly, regarding the huntress before her with thinly veiled skepticism. One didn't survive Vacuo without listening to their instincts. They never would have made it out of the desert if they hadn't. Still, it begged the question. What did Amber want? Was she trying to bulldoze her way into their team? No. Not allowed. Absolutely not. Team Nebula was all full up. They didn't need a fifth member. We cared about each other, of course. The maiden babbled on in the meantime. But in the end, we went our separate ways. I'm honestly a little jealous. Maybe that's why I've been running for so long. There was something off about those words. The way she'd said them just now. I'm tired of running, you know? 
tired of hunting too. As she balked, a tiny giggle fled from Amber's lips. Of being hunted? Okay. Little Miss Brunette clearly had a few screws loose. All right, walking away now. Wait. Ten fingers locked around her wrist, skin to skin. Emerald flared her semblance and made the girl see snakes. Amber's grip broke almost immediately, but no attack was forthcoming. Far from being intimidated, as any sane person would be. Amber looked upon her as if she were the Holy Grail. Emerald didn't like it. Not one bit. An illusion semblance. It really is you. Golden eyes flickered with a pulse of flame. I saw you in my dreams. You're the one. The one I've been searching for. Lady, whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. Buzz off. For what it's worth, I'm sorry, Amber said, ignoring her and tilting her head to the right. Chocolate-colored tresses concealing one eye from view. It gave her a mad, almost crazed air. You have a powerful semblance. You'll be able to use the power better than I ever could. Emerald drew back, not trusting herself to speak. Congratulations, the crazed girl turned her suddenly shortened staff, cradling the dust crystal within against her blouse. You passed. Realization broke like the dawn. The staff. She'd never lost it to begin with. She had always known where it was. This was a ruse. A test of some sort, to see who might help her. Any random passerby could have lent her a hand. None had, until Team Nebula came along. They'd been in the right place at the wrong time. But to what end? What was she blabbering about? Look, we don't want any trouble. Emerald raised one hand, carefully slipping the other towards Thief's respite at her back. You've got your staff. Just let us go. I'm afraid I can't do that. Amber lashed out quick as lightning and this time there was no escape. Her left hand clamped down on Emerald's shoulder and drew her in for a bruising headbutt. Or a flared. Emerald's world reeled. She struck back in a blind panic, but the older girl held fast and struck again, ramming clenched knuckles into her stomach. The thief folded around her limb, gasping for air that wouldn't come. What the hell? I'm sorry to place this burden upon you, but it has to be you. Amber whispered in her ear while her vision continued to swim. You can curse me, if you want. A hand swept down, grabbed her by the hair, and yanked up with intent, forcing their eyes to meet. Call me a coward. A craven. Just, just be better than I was. Listen to Ashbin. Trust in your team. Be braver than me. All right. Em. Blake and Pira are on there. Hey. Here at last, Naruto's voice rang out behind her. He'd noticed. Let go of her. What are you doing? In her blurry vision, Emerald had time enough to see Amber's grin. It was the grin of a madwoman, setting myself free. The staff whirled down at Emerald's face. I said let her go. Naruto struck. Even in her final moments, Amber's resolve didn't falter. Having baited the attack, she lowered her aura. She fixed her last thoughts on Emerald. With a smile, she finally let go. And the world changed. Blood spattered Emerald's face. It wasn't her own. She staggered back eyes wide. Amber didn't stagger at all. Like a drunkard at last call, the huntress swayed on her feet, grinning from ear to ear. One had but to look down to see the source of her euphoria. She'd gotten what she wanted, after all. Her chest remained relatively intact despite the clawed hand protruding from it. It was only Naruto's arm that held her up at all. And not for much longer. As Emerald looked on aghast, her partner ripped his hand free from Amber's chest, leaving a charred, gaping hole where her lungs and heart should have been. By all rights, she should have expired on the spot. And yet somehow she still stood. You're insane. Naruto scowled at her as he began to wipe the blood on her hand. Why did you lower your aura? Emerald agreed. Who did this to themselves? Who provoked an attack, knowing it would kill them? Amber laughed. Rather, she tried to. All that emerged was a soft wheeze. Golden eyes sought hers, one last time. At last, release. The madwoman slumped forward, and despite Naruto's warning, Emerald dove forward to catch her. For once so tall, she was surprisingly light in her arms. Amber didn't fight back. Didn't resist. Didn't lash out in some final futile effort to die. She was already dead. Her body just hadn't realized it yet. Her end was but moments away. There's no light, Amber rasped. Ashpin always said there would be light. Why isn't there? The fall maiden expired with a soft sigh and went limp in Emerald's arms. Naruto scowled down at her. The hell was that about? Emerald shrugged. No idea. Let's get back before. A spark shot up from Amber and into her. Emerald jerked back too late. Hot. 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 Agony burned through her veins like wildfire, knocking the illusionist on her arse and turning her world red. No stranger to pain, 
Emerald grit her teeth and staggered to her feet, only for her knees to buckle and send her crashing down again. Her forehead kissed the asphalt as she doubled over, clutching at her chest. Her heart began to pound, deafening all else. Naruto shouted something, but he sounded so distant, so far away. Something was wrong. Terribly, horribly wrong. She couldn't think. Couldn't move. Could barely even breathe. Sparks skittered between her teeth. Flames the color of their namesake seared up her arms, coiling about tan skin like snakes. Stop, stop, stop. Emerald curled in on herself, and for a moment, she was a little girl again, weak and powerless, dying of starvation in an alleyway. Thunder rolled overhead and reality snapped back with a lurch. Swirls of fire blazed behind her eyelids even as she squeezed them shut. She groaned and opened them again, only to find ice forming on her fingertips. Her nails dug bloody divots in the earth, cracking the pavement. Rain began to pitter-patter against her back, but even that tiny sensation sent fire ants racing through her veins. And the pain. Oh, the pain. It was everywhere. Everything. Make it stop. Naruto could help. He'd have a plan. He always knew what to do. Gasping and crying in quiet agony, Emerald turned to face her partner, trusting in him wholeheartedly. He'd not leave her here. He wouldn't abandon her. He would save her. She just knew it. Yet when she met his gaze, he looked just as terrified as she felt. Flaming red eyes gazed up at him, brimming with tears. Emerald whimpered. What's happening to me? He looked stricken. I don't know. The wind began to howl. Knock me out. She sobbed. Before it gets worse. Credit where it was due. Naruto didn't hesitate. He stepped forward. Strong arms closed around Emerald's trembling form, not to drive her under as she demanded, but instead pulling her into a firm embrace. She felt his semblance tug against her aura and realized at once what he intended. He was using it to siphon off her power, trying to take the worst of it, and the pain, from her quivering body and in doing so spare her such suffering. He'd always been like that, too kind for his own good. The power didn't take kindly to his intervention. Not one bit. It wanted to be free. Not restrained in a useless host. Heat and fire lashed out in a wave of light, carving across his face. Blood sprayed into the air. Emerald flinched at the grisly wound. Let me go. She struggled in his grip. I'll hurt you. Naruto grit his teeth and shook his head. Everything's going to be all right. Stop. She snarled, causing lightning to flash in the skies overhead. It's too much. You'll die. I'm here. You didn't seem to hear her. His quivering hand stroked the small of her back. I'm not gonna let go. And then, quite suddenly, the storm died. There was no word or warning for it, as if a giant hand had reached down from the heavens and batted the dark clouds away, so too did the sun shine once more. Emerald looked up, baffled, still gritting her teeth. Where the devil were Blake and Pira? Even with their help, and what could they do? They couldn't keep this secret for long. This power, whatever it was, she could barely control it. Already she felt full to bursting again, and Naruto looked sick just from siphoning off her excess energy. Too much. Her partner released her, turned, and dry heaved against the road. It hurts. Gotta let it out. Way too much. His hand snapped out and a blistering pulse burst from him, upturning the street. Cars buckled. Alarms wailed. Emerald's mind balked. In the distance, sirens began to wail. They needed to run, move, FLE before. They never had a chance. A dark green blur crashed down into the street from on high with an almighty crack, their impact kicking up a vicious cloud of dust. Emerald inhaled reflexively and was left hacking and coughing against the sudden surge of smog. Her fear flared and the wind responded, blasting the haze away. Her head whipped around and she struggled upright in Naruto's arms, half expecting to see an enemy. Imagine her surprise then, when she found herself face to face with the headmaster of Beacon. Ashpin looked absolutely furious. She knew it by the set of his jaw and the hard glint of his eyes. Strange green sparks skittered down the length of his cane. For a moment, she feared he might attack them on sight. Then he saw Amber and his fear became forlorn. He looked between them, saw the blood on Naruto's hand, the fear in Emerald's eyes, the ruined state of Amber's body. A lesser man might have leaped to conclusions. Disaster would have sprung from this moment and created chaos. Ashpin was not such a man. Well, perhaps he was but eternity had tempered his emotions. It allowed him to step back and see the truth for what it was. I feared as much. His shoulders sagged in silent despair as he took in the scene before them. Amber, what have you done? Together, Naruto and Emerald rounded on Ashpin. He beheld their burning eyes. Both of them. 
With a weary sigh, the immortal knelt on one knee and offered them his hand. Come with me if you want to live. Emerald was fine. Their team was fine. Everything. Was. Fine. Naruto chanted the words like a mantra in his head, reciting them over and over again in a rota. They helped him find his center. He would not bend. He would not break. Even here in Ashpin's office under so many prying eyes, he refused to show weakness. He didn't like it any more than Emerald did. She squirmed in their seat and tried her best to breathe, but he could clearly see that this was getting to her. Her innate paranoia probably wasn't helping any. Once again, he found himself struck by the wild urge to grab her and run, leaving all of this behind. Once upon a time, it would have been easy, a quick illusion to distract Ashpin, and they would be away. They could still do that now, but this time there would be consequences. But they'd put down roots. They'd made friends. Blake and Pira would be heartbroken if they ran away, to say nothing of Coco and Velvet. He imagined their faces. He remembered his stern words to Blake. He told her to stand and fight. He recalled the encouragement Emerald had given Pira. They'd all fought together, been blooded together. To just walk out on them now. No. He couldn't do that. And so he didn't. Besides, none of them were his enemies. They were friends and allies all. So. Just. Calm. Down. Breathe. Easy. Right? Not so much. He forced himself to focus and tried to temper the newfound power boiling in his veins. That proved. Difficult. Life energy and the occasional stray semblance were one thing. But this? This wasn't something that he had any idea how to control. It didn't want to obey him. Damn it, his mind raged. Stupid semblance. Really bit me in the ass this time, didn't it? He just wanted to help Emerald. Instead, he'd found himself drawn into the same plight as she. This power was ancient and old. So very old. Wild, too. Like wrestling a storm with your bare hands. It just couldn't be done. This strange new energy had a mind of its own. It did not want to be contained. It wanted to be free. It wanted to sing. It longed to be free, not contained in a mortal shell. His emotional state didn't much help matters. This strange new power battered at the walls of his self-control, chipping them away bit by bit until it felt like his head was going to explode. It. Wanted. Out. One look at Emerald told him she was contending with the same burden. Her eyes pulsed with the same flames, red to his blue. It hurt. Seeing her like this. You okay? He reached out a hand and his partner latched onto it like a drowning woman. All but leaping into his lap. The motion startled him, more so as her arms wound around his neck and her forehead kissed his. Not a heartbeat later she flung her semblance at him, wrapping him in an illusion as she had so many times before. Their own silent means of communication. He watched her lips move, the sound and heard to everyone but him. No. I'm not. She wrinkled her nose at him. I don't trust the old man. I don't trust any of this. Neither do I, he whispered back. But we need him. For now. She scowled and the mirage broke. Damn Amber. What had she infected them with? Flames still flicked at the edge of his vision even when he closed his eyes unable to be ignored. They moved whenever he turned his head, as if his face were a flame. They irritated him beyond measure. Distracted him as much as her, and he knew Emerald was probably going mad. Pira and Blake certainly were. Are you sure you're alright? Naruto blinked, somewhat startled to find their resident redhead touching one hand to his forehead with a concerned expression. Per Pira. Always such a worry ward. Forcing himself upright in his chair and careful to keep his power at bay, he reached around Emerald to give the younger girl a swift hug. Much to his surprise, he felt her bury her head into the divot of his shoulder. All right. Maybe she was a little more than worried. He gave her back a brief squeeze and pulled away. We're fine, PYR. He forced a smile he didn't feel. That, at least, lifted her spirits. Blake twitched, ears gone flat atop her head. You don't look fine. The blonde quirked a brow and offered her an arm. Wanna hug it out? Might make us feel better. She skittered back. No. Naruto felt a brief flash of pity mixed with pride. Stubborn, silly girl. She really was far too easy to tease. Vacuo would have eaten her alive. He opened his mouth to tease his fellow faunas further, but Emerald got there first. We'll be all right if someone would start talking already. Her blazing gaze nailed Ashpin to his chair. In but a moment, the headmaster temporized with a raised hand. You'll have all the answers you seek and more. Once Crow arrives. A pause then, as he seemed to consider something else. His hand fell and a small smile played across his aged visage. Do not ask about the name. He's rather sensitive about the spelling. Their little quartet blinked. Why? 
Pierre perked up and went a step further. Do you mean Crow Branwin? Do you know him, Miss Nikos? The redhead winced. He's something of a legend in Mistral, though not for the reasons you might think. As though summoned by those very words, the elevator doors swept open and a lean man clad in dusty traveling leather strode, stumbled really, through the aperture. Naruto had all of an instant to take in dark hair, red eyes, and a weapon at his back, not to mention the flask at his hip, before he was upon them. The heady stench of alcohol hit them a moment later, drawing a grimace from the fourteens. Bloody bastard smelled like he slept in a brewery. This, Naruto realized, must be Crow. All right, Oz, I'm here, the newcomer drawled, ignoring the four of them. Why'd you pull me out of Atlas like that? Ashpin sniffed, then made a face of his own. It rather smells as if I pulled you out of a bar. Well, yeah, the stranger flashed him a roguish grin. Hunting is thirsty work. Emerald exchanged a bleak look with Pira. I see what you mean. Blake scoffed. Naruto was tempted to do the same. Well, she tried to warn us. Where's Amber? Crow ignored them, again. What were they, chopped liver? Took a few steps forward, uncaring as the elevator doors clicked shut behind him. You mentioned her during our call. Said it was urgent. His bleary gaze roved over each of them, only to narrow when he didn't find his ward there. Where is she? Here at last, Ashpin's facade fractured. I did mention her, but it's more complicated than that. I had thought it best to speak of this in person. Well, Branwen's brow furrowed. I'm here now. Spill it. Amber took her life, Crow. Her successors sit here before you. Team Nebula winced at the unpleasant reminder. Crow scoffed outright. She did what? No. He shook his head. Not her. No way. I don't believe you. Amber was a lot of things. But suicidal? Not a chance. It is not a matter of belief. The headmaster quirked a brow. Naruto? Emerald? If you would. Naruto had only just gotten his eyes under control. They flared up again the moment he lost concentration. Judging by Emerald's curse, the reverse applied to her. A gust of wind surged through the room, causing many a bad hair day before the two of them managed to rein themselves in. Well, crap. Crow saw their burning eyes and spat a curse. How the hell did that happen? He squinted at Naruto, or rather, his eyes. That shouldn't be possible. This from the drunken bird? Naruto squinted right back, a scowl already twisting his face. I didn't think it was possible for you to smell this bad. Hey. Oddly enough, that made the drunkard laugh. Least you've got some spirit. That's something at least. Branwen. The elevator dinged open again without warning, and a blast of cold ice shot through to strike said unfortunate drunkard on the arse. He rounded to face the perpetrator with a snarl and was promptly struck in the face by a second blast. A third struck him low in the gut, flipped him over Ashpin's desk, and slammed him into a wall leaving a decidedly crow-shaped impression behind. He hung there for a moment, eyes spinning merrily in his head before he slid down with a groan. Well, Ashpin put his head in his hands. It would seem we have company. You cheeky little shit. A woman's voice absolutely snarled into the ensuing silence. Did you have to hit every single button on the elevator? Crazy bitch. Crow massaged his hindquarters with a growl as he climbed to his feet. Thought I told you not to follow me up here. Why, whatever do you mean? A low laugh answered him. I must be hard of hearing. And blind. His eyes flashed. You hit me with a damn icicle. No, wait. A pause. Icicles. A stranger emerged from the elevator. You lived, didn't you? Clad in a loose azure dress that billowed about her frail frame, she limped into the office with determination and grace, back hunched only slightly with the weight of age, or perhaps some unseen burden. Naruto regarded her with idle curiosity. There was something odd about her that caught the eye. A presence. One that commanded respect. Though her hair was gray and her face lined with age, her blue eyes burned high and wild with the springtime of youth. Her sole sign of weakness was the gnarled staff of black oak she leaned upon, longer than she was tall. Damn thing certainly looked heavy enough. As he looked on, she stubbed Crow's toes with it for good measure. He lurched back, clutching at his foot. Again. Why? She grinned. For being a prat. My apologies, a new voice sighed. You know how she gets when she sets her mind on something, and you did antagonize her. Bite me, iron dick. Another sigh, this one lower than the last. Really, now you're just being crass. Behind that curmudgeonly old woman came a man Naruto actually recognized, much to his consternation and then, dread. Any goodwill he might have felt evaporated in that moment. He felt himself wilt. Judging by her sudden stiffness in his lap, Emerald recalled him just as well. 
It was a bit difficult to forget someone like that. He knew that face and uniform anywhere. Although said uniform had been decidedly less grand since their last meeting. What's the freaking general of Atlas doing here? She hissed. One of Blake's ears twitched. Shoo. Naruto shushed Emerald. If General James Ironwood heard them, he didn't show it. He only had eyes for the shrunken crow and harassing crow. That's enough, Freya. Don't strain yourself. Let me be, Jimmy. She swatted his hand down with surprising speed for one so frail, giving the exasperated huntsman time to scramble back before she could smite him with her staff again. I've still got some life left in these old bones and I will be damned before I miss something like. Oh. Her brow shot into her hairline as she found them at last. Oh. My. You poor dears. You look a right mess. Her lined face crinkled in a smile. Don't you worry. We'll have this sorted shortly. Naruto wasn't one to blindly trust someone, but something in him wanted to believe those words. Ashbin didn't even look surprised by this point. More resigned. Really? Did you have to bring her, James? Ironwood offered a rueful chuckle. She brought herself? Once she heard about Amber, she all but hijacked a bullhead. Of course I did. The woman cackled. I'd not miss this for anything. The headmaster of Vale looked like he might protest to that effect, but thought better of it. Naruto wondered what manner of secrets lurked behind that impassive mien. On the surface, it didn't seem strange for two men to meet like this, but something niggled at him all the same. Team Nebula, Ashbin made his introductions at last. I'd like you to meet Freya, the Winter Maiden. Hello. Pira was polite enough to wave at the very least. Blake just stared. Emerald raised a hand. Um, should that term mean something? A lengthy explanation followed. By the end of it, their world had shattered forevermore. Naruto reeled back, his brain fit to burst. The Grim had a leader? Magic was real? Relics were a thing. This power was trapped in him and Emerald. Until death. He dared a glance at his comrades. Blake looked to have gone into shock. Pira's smile had become incredibly brittle. Emerald was still against him. Her expression schooled into a blank mask. He'd seen that expression many a time before. He knew it by the tightness of her eyes. She wasn't angry. She'd gone well past it, just as he had. She was furious. So was he. Anger coiled in his stomach and burst into anger, a twisted and gnarled root that threatened to consume him entirely. Only a few minutes ago he'd felt bad for Amber. He had pitted a girl so filled with fear that she saw death as an alternative to being hunted. She'd manipulated him and Emerald into killing her, because in her mind, that was better than a life on the run. That bitch. That absolute bitch. He hadn't wanted to kill her then. He did now. But he couldn't, could he? She was dead and gone, out of his reach as the heavens themselves. And in her final moments, her fear had dragged his team into a bloody shadow war. So that's it, huh? Laughter tumbled out of him, ugly and sharp as his fingers began to twitch at his sides. We were in the wrong place at the right time. Unfortunate, but true. Oshpin at least had the good grace to look abashed. I know you did not ask for this burden to be thrust upon you. No. Emerald hissed, her words colder than a vacuum in night. We didn't. Choose your next words very carefully. Beacon was supposed to be a second chance for him and Emerald. A chance to put the mistakes of their past behind them and start anew. A change. A chance for a new career. A new life. A new everything. So much for that. None of this was fair. They hadn't asked for this. They didn't want this. He grit his teeth until he felt a molar crack. Slowly but surely, the wind swept in. He saw, felt. The moment Jade Flame sprang to life in Emerald's open palms. This strange new power connected the two of them. He could feel her anger and fear as clearly as if it were his own, just as he could feel her drawing upon the maiden's might in her rage. Part of him wanted to give into it himself, to just smash everything and be done with this. It would be so simple. He just had to let the power out. It would do the rest. But he wasn't that person. Not anymore. Some of his anger and suspicion must have shown through on his face because Ashpin sighed. Rest assured, I am your ally. He was regarding them warily now, like a pair of skittish foxes fit to bite. Good. I will do you no harm. Nor will Crow. What, me? Course not. Bramwin grumbled. Thought that'd be obvious. Nor will I. Ironwood interjected. Swear it. The men blinked. Freya tittered softly. Ashpin found his voice first. I beg your pardon? Swear it. Emerald repeated as she climbed to her feet, eyes ablaze. Swear here and now that you'll keep us out of this. All this Salem and relic nonsense, we don't want anything to do with any of it. Freya favored him with a pitying frown. It's not that simple, lass. 
This isn't a duty you can forswear. Then we'll never use that power. Even if you're hunted for it? Ironwood interjected ruthlessly. You will be, I can assure you of that. Even given your unique circumstances, such as the fate of a maiden, you've already been told the truth. You need to be kept safe, not allowed into the wilds. That's not fair. Blake burst out, eyes wide and frightful. What do you intend to do? Stick them in a cage? On the contrary, I believe they should be confined to Beacon. As should the two of you. You're a risk. How are we a risk? Pirov frowned, somewhat taken aback. You can't do that. You've no right. You're right. The general nodded. I can't. I have no power in Vale. Ashpin, however, does. All eyes turned to the man in question. He steepled his fingers and said not a word. Do you see now how they seek to shackle you? Naruto released a short, sharp breath of anger. Enough. He climbed to his feet with great care, teeth sharp, and eyes gone red. Scarlet sparks snarled at his fingertips. His newfound power threatened to thunder out of him, a hurricane ready to be unleashed upon the unwitting and the unworthy. Yet again he exercised restraint, but only just. Emerald's right. This isn't our fight. Ha! Huh, she preened. However, we've been dragged into this against our will. It's not like we can ignore it. His gaze swept the room, daring an objection. When none came, he buelled on. Surely we can make some concessions here. And if we refuse? Blank red eyes rose to regard him. Then I turn the rest of you into a tin can. Would you like that, General? Easy. Now. Crow jerked back, palms raised. We're all on the same side here. Just calm down. When faced with maiden power, Ashpin proved quicker on the uptake. If it's an oath you want from me, I'll give you one. Before he could say more, the headmaster's hand snapped up, another coming to rest just above his heart. I swear on the graves of my daughters that I will never harm you or your team. His head bowed further still. You will not be impeded in any way. Furthermore, you and yours will be free to continue your lessons here at Beacon as you please. May they haunt me if I break the sacred vow. Naruto stilled. You go that far? Crow winced. Oz, ain't that a bit much? On the contrary. Freya limped forward, leaning heavily upon her staff. I don't think it's enough. As a certain general looked on aghast, she offered Naruto a weak hand. Don't mind James. His heart is in the right place. She favored him with a kindly smile. If he gets uppity, you're welcome to smack him around a bit. We only want the best for you, after all. A pale blue eye winked at them as she said those words. Actually winked. Wouldn't want to ruin that second life of yours now, would you? I can promise you, we're not here to lock you away, despite what some might suggest. Ironwood grunted. I'm standing right here. Go downstairs, Jimmy. She flicked a lazy finger at him. We'll talk later. Remarkably, the general deferred to Freya and did just that, though his look suggested they hadn't heard the end of this. Naruto squinted at her. Did she know who they were? It was possible. They'd worn masks during their time in Atlas and gone to great lengths to conceal their identities. He was sure he would have remembered someone like Freya at that. Beneath her gentle smile, however, he sensed a heart of steel. He felt his anger begin to subside. Ironwood might be difficult, but at least the Winter Maiden was reasonable. And clearly, she had some sway over him. He clasped her palm and together, they shook. Fair enough. Now that we've put that aside, I simply must inquire about that semblance of yours. There was a note of eagerness in Ashpin's voice now, like a boy who'd found a particularly shiny stone. How does it work? I believe it's what allowed you to contain some measure of the maiden power in the first place. Naruto's jaw clicked shut in silent defiance. Wait, wait, wait. Crow raised his voice. Semblance or not, none of this explains how he, he stabbed a finger at Naruto, as part of Amber's power. It only goes to women. We know that. Then let's test it, shall we? Much to Naruto's chagrin, Freya offered him a veined hand. Try to take some of my power, boy. Let's see if it works a second time. Well, she's got a pair. Emerald applauded. Blake winced. That might not be a good idea. Seconded. Pira piped up, startling them. You don't know what you're asking. Naruto dithered. Are you certain? They're right, you know. It's not a pleasant process. At all. Come now, Freya rolled her eyes. I'm no spring chicken, but I've plenty of life left in me yet. You won't kill me. If you say so. His hand touched hers, and he closed his eyes, pushing his semblance to the fore. Reaper's touch wasn't a passive gift. He had to activate it. This time, he was cautious. How much to take? For all her fire, Freya was an old woman. He didn't want to sap her life force at all, but she was being so damn insistent. And besides, she was right. 
There was only one way to tell if yesterday had been a fluke or not. There was something there. A deep blue flame in the dark. Naruto wrapped his mind around it, imagining a pair of invisible hands cradling the cold fire to shield it from the wind. It felt cold. Cold? How strange. Why would fire be cold? No, it wasn't fire at all. It was a blizzard. Even in his mind, he could feel frost creeping through his fingers. He threaded his aura through it like a fish hook and gave the gentlest tug he could. Ack. Freya jerked her hand back with a hiss, shattering his concentration. His eyes snapped open. Hers seemed a bit dimmer than before. Emerald hastened to his side. How much did you take? I'm fine. The old crone pushed herself upright with a laugh. My, my, I certainly felt that. The boy's a veritable black hole. As she spoke, she massaged her wrist, forcing color to creep back into her hand once more. Naruto saw the cracked, flaking skin there and winced. He doesn't just drain aura. He takes your very life force. For all her pain, she sounded impressed. Small wonder he's able to snatch semblances. I suspect I'd not be able to get away if I actually meant to drain me. Fascinating. Ajpin murmured. Crow disagreed. That's not the word I'd use. It wasn't an insult, but shame flooded Naruto's face nevertheless. He hadn't meant to hurt her. I can give it back, you know. That drew a murmur of confusion from everyone save his team. Of course, they knew what he could do. Teammates didn't keep secrets. Certainly not friends. Freya considered him anew. Can you know? Well, don't just stand there gawking. Let's see it. Crow scoffed. Got a death wish, this one. I heard that. Bird brain. Quick as a flash, she rounded on Naruto again, eyes narrow. Be careful this time, would you? I'm afraid these old bones of mine aren't as strong as they used to be. Naruto laid a hand on hers and dredged up his aura. Now this, he felt more comfortable with. He rather liked this aspect of his semblance. Yes, it could be used to harm and hurt, even kill, but it could give back what it taken. And more. He'd been stockpiling energy for quite some time now, and the maiden energy had only bolstered that. It was the easiest thing to hook his aura into hers and send it racing back the way it had come. An easy task indeed. The tiniest thorn of guilt pricked at him and held him back. I wouldn't, were I you? He ignored the voice. His mind plunged back into the black, and he found himself staring at that strange blizzard again. He was beginning to realize what it was. Her soul. It looked fainter now, like a storm dashed against the slope of a mighty mountain. On a whim, he cradled it with his hands again. This time he gave her a little more than he should, nearly a fourth of what he'd been accumulating for the last year. Not aura, but pure life energy. It would tap his reserves a bit, but he could always take more from an enemy or a grim. He felt no compunctions with sharing what he had taken. A faint scarlet shimmer spread from his hand and suffused itself across Freya's palm. Soon it spread to her elbow, her shoulder, followed by her entire body. Well, this is strange. The winter maiden frowned within the scarlet shroud. I really don't feel in a thigh thigh right. Her words peeked into a surprisingly girlish delp as power poured out of him and into her. Naruto felt the moment her power latched onto his. Like an infant at the teat, it suckled greedily. There. That should be enough. Time to stop. He reached in to cut the tether between them, and failed. A startled hiss tore out of him. He couldn't. Somewhere deep inside of him, a dam had burst, and now the flood waters poured forth. Wind picked up and brought every other element with it. Fire and ice melted to make steam, shrouding the room in an ethereal haze. Freya gasped in surprise, but rather than push him back, she pulled him in. He suspected it wasn't intentional on her part, because her hand gave a sudden spasm and clamped down around his, tightening most painfully. She couldn't release him. He couldn't let go, either. His legs buckled as a jolt of weakness shot through him. Emerald reached for his shoulder, only to buckle as an uncontrolled burst of wind forced her back. Frantic, he slapped his free hand forward and pushed. It worked a little too well. The winter maiden shot backward, vanished into the haze, and struck a wall. Her body slumped with a groan. Crow all but slid to her side. Are you all right? I'm fine, Birdbrain. Was it just him? Or did her voice sound different? Lighter, somehow? Coughing but once, Freya shook her head and emerged from the fog, revealing rosy cheeks and a small smile. Well, pearly white teeth flashed in a cheery grin. That certainly had some oomph to it. Be more careful next time. Naruto's jaw popped open with an audible click. What? Emerald joined him, eyes wide. The Pira leaned back. Actual. Blake gasped. Hell. The rest. Stared. What? Bright blue eyes blinked. Ashpin? Crow? Everyone? 
Why are you staring at me like that? Freya was nowhere to be seen. A stranger stood in her place. Where had the old crone gone? This woman looked thirty at worst, her once loose robe and cloak now clung scandlessly tied across a curvaceous figure that would make even Glinda Goodwitch green with envy. Color had bled back into her hair as well, banishing the silver from her cropped tresses, which weren't short at all now, spilling down her back in a crimson curtain lush and vibrant with life. Huh. She'd been a redhead. Who knew? Crow flushed and coughed into his fist. Freya. The redhead blinked. Yeah, birdbrain. He averted his gaze and pointed. She looked down. Blinked. Wait. What? Blue eyes bulged. Her hands rose to cup something that had not been there before. Bloody hell. I've got a chest again. When did that happen? Emerald swore. You've got to be kidding me. She stacked. What in the world? My voice. The winter maiden touched a hand to her mouth, then raised it and balked at the flawless skin there. What have you done to me? Fatigue hit Naruto like a truck, and he reeled back, feeling vaguely nauseous. Not from the sight before him, he was a healthy red-blooded male after all. No, it was a deeper weakness that had him gasping for air. He hadn't meant to give her that much energy at all. It just happened. His eyes were still burning, brighter than ever. The power within him sang high and happy and wild in the presence of its kin. Beneath that, his soul ached, throbbing with a vaguely unpleasant sort of pain. I'm not sure, he admitted, wincing at just how weak he sounded. Blake and Pira had to help him sit until the tremors passed. That's never happened before. Whatever it was, he had no intention of ever doing that again. It felt like someone had taken sandpaper to his soul. And then some. As if he'd shaved years off his lifespan. I did try to warn you, that odd little voice mocked him. Oshpin rose from his desk, eyes wide. Remarkable. You've given me back my youth. Freya was oblivious to it all, pivoting in place to admire herself. And then some. She ran a hand down her flank, and Naruto found himself gulping. That robe was way too tight for decency's sake. I haven't felt this good in. Well, she paused and genuinely seemed to consider the matter for a moment. Forever. This is amazing. As everyone looked on aghast, she bounced once. Twice. Thrice. Crow clapped slowly. Hot damn. Not bad for an old broad. An icicle shot past his face, tearing a thin slice in his right cheek. Repeat that again, and you won't be having children. Freya lowered her arm, eyes narrow. In the same beat, she resumed inspecting herself. Was I always this tall? She wondered aloud. Feels weird when you spent all those years hunched over. Oh, that's still firm at least. Naruto clapped a hand over Blake's eyes. Emerald did the same to him. Pira averted hers with a squeak, her face gone rosy. Without warning, Freya rounded on them, on Naruto, as ablaze with blue flame. He froze, a deer in the headlights. Naruto wasn't sure he liked that smile of hers. All bright and high and wild, it was nothing at all like the fading shadow of a woman he'd begun to respect. Here was a young woman in the springtime of her youth, fierce and fearsome as a winter storm. He shrank back half a step. She saw his weakness and pounced. That settles it. Said revitalized woman cast her staff aside and swept Naruto up into her arms, crushing his face against her bosom. You're adopted. Naruto felt his ears twitch. Eh? You and that girlie of yours, she hummed, crushing him tighter. Adopted. Hell, I'll adopt your entire team if you want. Or better yet, marry me. Absolutely not. Oddly enough, that reactivated Blake. Not you too. Pira stumbled upright. Isn't it a bit sudden for that? Emerald sputtered. Now wait just a second. Don't run off. Oshpin flung his arms up before they could all descend into collective madness. This is unprecedented. We need to run some tests before you do anything else. Fine by me. Freya preened, holding him tight. Let's take this down to the vault. It's nice and quiet down there. No prying eyes to watch us. A sound argument. Naruto coughed weakly, still trapped in her powerful embrace. Don't suppose I get a say in this. Nope. She grinned at him. If I'm young again, I plan to enjoy it while I can. Freya whirled and dragged him toward the elevator with a mad giggle. Naruto was helpless but to follow. Emerald gave chase. And with that event, the world changed. Training begins now. Freya's attack came with only three words for a warning, so sharp and sudden that Naruto barely had time to raise one of his shields. A torrent of ice slammed into his defenses, sending him skidding back three paces. Once upon a time, such a declaration would have ended with him flat on his back, a groaning, insensate mess down here in the vault. No? He grit his teeth and endured, uncaring as hoarfrost crept up his arms. His semblance flared to life, 
the eternal hunger that was his gift draining the element long before it could turn his limbs numb. What was once strong became weak, brittle as false glass. A quick flick of his wrist shattered it completely, sending the shards skittering across the floor. Freya regarded him across the vault, eyes burning with pale flames. Well done. She bounded in place, made giddy with his success. You've come far since we started. Naruto kept his eyes locked with hers, refusing to look anywhere else. There was no place for distractions in a fight. She'd used her beauty to distract him more than once in the beginning, enticing him with one hand, then launching a devastating assault with the other. Suffice to say, two weeks of training had since inured him somewhat to her surprise attacks. From that, he learned another valuable lesson. What can I say? He planted his feet and swung his arm back. I had a good teacher. Teamwork was all well and good, but ambushes were even better. A shadow appeared behind Freya. Thief's respite barked. Emerald's attack skittered off a thick plate of ice. Damn it. Naruto ripped his remaining shield from his shoulders and flung it forward like a frisbee. Freya laughed. See? Told you. You weren't ready. Rather than retreat as any sane individual would, the revitalized maiden scoffed, slapped his shield aside like a piece of cardboard, and sent him crashing backward with a wave of wind. His back hit the ground with the force of a sledgehammer, sending him skidding across the floor of the vault like a flung stone. Emerald joined him not a moment later, tearing another divot in the already sundered metal as she skidded to a halt beside him. Burning red eyes regarded pulsing blue, each trailing flames of their own. Why? She turned aside to spit a wad of blood onto the floor of the vault. Did we agree to this again? Because we're learning to control this power? Naruto pushed himself upright with a groan. And we need training? I get that. She groaned and wrenched herself upright. But why is he down here? As if to echo those very words, the harsh bark of a familiar weapon reminded them that they weren't alone. Across the way, Pira cried out as Crow kicked her to the ground. Blake didn't fare much better. She somehow evaded the next strike by virtue of her semblance and cut at his leg, only for the wily Brahmin to grab her by the scruff of the neck like a naughty kitten and slam her into the stunned redhead. Time out, time out, time out, the latter cried, scrambling back. We weren't ready. Life won't give you a time out, princess. Harbinger cut down after the champion, forcing the younger girls to brace her shield with both hands or risk a punishing blow. This here's a trial by fire. Fight. The ribbon of gamble shroud wrapped around his neck, hauling him back. Pira tumbled forward and took up her sword again. Her rifle barked, warding Crow back. Harbinger intercepted the bullets with a lazy twirl as the older huntsman gave ground, laughing all the while. Because he's a sadist? And just where, Freya's voice crooned, are you looking? The telltale bite of winter in the air was all the warning they received. Freya was relentless in a way only a fully realized maiden could be. Her instruction even more so. While she tended to rely on ice, the other elements were not beyond her. She was the eye of the storm, and the storm knew no mercy. Freezing winds blasted from her, and even as he clambered up on one knee, she flowed into another stance. A barefoot stomped down with impossible power. Nature responded in kind, sending a line of jagged ice hurtling his way. Emerald was just a little bit slower on the draw, her knees buckling before she could tumble to safety. No time to dodge. Naruto whipped out a hand, calling upon his new power. Blue eyes burned with azure flames. Beside him, Emerald mirrored the motion. The power of a maiden wasn't complicated, more a thing of emotion than anything else, it ever simmering just beneath the surface, aching to come out. It simply didn't like Naruto. This gift was meant to be used by a woman, not a man. Yet, thanks to his semblance, this heady power burned between him and Emerald both, ready. It responded to one's emotions. And it answered the call now. An angry pillar of sapphire flame sprang to his hand and slammed against her frigid element. He warred against cold, to no avail. For all his strength, Freya was infinitely more powerful. Her avalanche plowed on in spite of his attack, a wall of frozen death that would swallow him whole if he let it. And then, incredibly, it veered aside, ramming into the wall. Naruto heaved out a thankful breath as he climbed to his feet. Thanks, M. What are friends for? His partner glided forward with a nod, sickles flicking out at her sides. Clever girl. Their mentor applauded her ingenuity. That semblance of yours really is one of a kind. I dare say your maiden powers have made it even stronger. But you'll never win like this. Naruto hummed softly, kicked his shield up into his waiting hand. Emerald drew her sickles back. The two thieves exchanged a sidelong look. Then they launched themselves at her. All the world descended into a mad whirl of combat, a wild waltz with no rhyme or reason. Limbs blurred. 
Ice crackled. Dust barked. It felt like an eternity to Naruto, when in truth, their clash didn't last long at all. Little more than thirty seconds. A shield bash transitioned into flowing sweep with one of Emerald's blades. Freya stumbled as the chain caught her heel and for a moment, just a moment, he thought they had her. Then she ripped her way free and caught their weapons with ease, arms crossed at her chest. Did I ever tell you too about my semblance? Naruto gulped audibly. No. Let me show you. He didn't see what she did, but he certainly felt it. An invisible force hit him and Emerald at once, sending the duo flying into the air. Naruto's back struck a wall, and he slid down it, head spinning. Freya landed atop him with a cheery smile. Breath whooshed forth from his lungs in a painful cry. Oh, not bad. Boy, you're learning. He glared up at the ceiling. Is that why I feel like death? Yup. The reinvigorated maiden smacked her lips with an audible pop. It takes a bit of concentration at first, but soon it'll be like second nature to you and that lass of yours. Emerald staggered up behind her, only for a fresh gust of wind to knock her flat. See? I've had years to practice. In time, the two of you. Well, she tilted her head, regarding him with lidded eyes. I dare say you'll be invincible. An unintelligible gurgle greeted her across the vault. Walk it off, dear. You think I'm rough? She scoffed and flicked a stray strand of scarlet hair over her shoulder. Wait till you meet Maria. Once she gets here, she'll make this seem gentle by comparison. Naruto creaked an eye open. Who? Don't know any Maria. A dear friend of mine. The winter maiden looked away just a bit too quickly for his liking. You'll like her, I think. She's got spunk. Blue eyes narrowed. Freya. No. Whatever you're thinking, no. What? The maiden looked away just a little too quickly. All old people know each other. It's a thing. You're not old anymore. Is that so? Freya cupped her breasts and flashed him a saucy smile. Why? You're right. She leaned forward, lips brushing the outer lobe of his ear. How silly of me to forget. Naruto shivered. But I'll leave you be for now. When she finally deigned to stand, she was grinning from ear to ear. Wouldn't want a dagger in my back, no? You two get some rest. She reached down and flicked his forehead just so, her fingers lingering on his skin. We'll continue where we left off tomorrow. Calavera should be here in about a month or so. Until then. Naruto watched her sashay away, hips swaying. He caught himself staring and shook his head. Honestly, he swore she was doing that just to get a rise out of him. At least Blake and Pira were still putting up a fight against Crow. Then again, they didn't have a new power weighing them down, sapping their strength like a broken sieve. The thought rankled him. They were, all of them, improving, but it felt so slow. They needed to get stronger. Soon, something was coming for them. He felt it in his bones. He was still lying there, sprawled out on the floor when Emerald finally reached him. She didn't so much sit as she did fling herself to the floor. I don't like her. His head shifted. Em, I don't. She rounded on him, as trailing scarlet flames. Ever since you did, that, ten hands flailed, failing to find the words, she's been all over you. I'm not sure if she wants to adopt you or take you for herself. A spark of defiance shot through her gaze. You won't let her, right? Course not. He uttered a jaw-popping yawn. I'm not that easy. He half expected her to kick him for that. Nothing happened, and he looked at her anew. Emerald gripped her wrist until he heard the bones creak beneath her grasp. Please, never leave me. She'd been fearful lately. He didn't like that. Beacon was meant to be a fresh start. Not this. And so he laughed instead. Nope. Never. You're stuck with me. Till death do us part. She shifted but a little, tucking herself down into his side. Wait, didn't you say you were gonna live forever? H.A., he chortled. Then that's what we'll do. An aching arm shifted, pulling herself against his side. Trust in me. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. A few tricks indeed. He still held a trump card. One he wouldn't use in combat. One he'd kept secret from the others. He'd not used it in. Well, years, for good reason, due to the caveats that came with it. But a thief knew better. It was always best to keep an ace up one's sleeve. A power like that was dangerous in the wrong hands, downright intoxicating in others. He'd seen firsthand what that kind of semblance did. No. His ironclad rule held. This was something he would only ever use on an enemy, only in a life or death scenario, and only then if word of it couldn't be traced back to him. He hadn't let Jax's mind control semblance die with him back in the deserts of Vacuo. Perhaps that was weakness on his part, the inability to give up such a useful gift. He ripped it from that lunatic moments before his death. As a result, it was degraded, weaker than before. 
Part of him loathed holding on to it all, while the rest of him recognized the ruthless pragmatism of it all. He'd held on to it because they needed an edge against their enemies, a means to defend themselves when all hope was lost, but still powerful in its own right. Not all powerful. Emerald would be furious with him if she knew the truth. How fortunate, then, that he was such a good liar. Vacuo raised many things, but weaklings weren't one of them. So why did he feel sick to his stomach? Something had changed. Cinder could feel it in the air, but what it meant, she knew not. There was a strange tension in the air that hadn't been there before, a whisper of warning that only she could recognize. The signs were all there. One had but to read them. Team Nebula had been conspicuously absent from combat classes for the last two weeks. Not from the main campus itself, but absent nevertheless. The team had kept mostly to themselves, much to the annoyance of others. Perhaps this was something to look into. Perhaps not. After all, a man couldn't possibly inherit the maiden power. It just wasn't possible. How little she knew. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.